so can we start uh, so would you explain about yourself and your project experience uh, so far you have worked on it okay sure so uh, basically i'm from uh, hajari bag that is in jharkhand and uh, previously i was working with uh, uh, that is in delhi and uh, as per my experience uh, overall uh, i have more than 3 years of experience in development and uh, in uh, uh, i mean uh, so i mostly work on front end only and uh, uh and currently i'm using uh, react js so in react js uh, more than i have uh, more than 2 years of experience and uh, in my uh, previous project uh, it was like of uh, uh, labor, labor uh, booking system where uh, uh, like uh, it was a small type of project by the way so i used uh, the google sheet to store the data uh, uh, of the laborers so anyone can uh, search uh, the laborers data for the booking and they can uh, contact uh, to them directly so like this it was a project okay okay good to hear that so we'll start uh, with the interview now so we'll start from basic uh, i mean uh, we'll start from html itself so uh, what is event bubbling and uh, event looping event bubbling and event looping loop right yeah okay yeah so in event bubbling uh, that means uh, i can give a, one example for it uh, i don't know the exact uh, definition for it actually so let's suppose uh, yeah, sure. I, uh, i have uh, multiple uh, uh, elements uh, like uh, one each parent and inside it uh, the child and inside it uh, sub child so when we click on the sub child the uh, if there are events on the parent and child and the sub child so all the events will be called so that is uh, uh, the event bubbling and to prevent it uh, we have uh, the stop uh, propagation so we can use that to stop it and uh, in uh, event loop uh, that means as we know uh, that uh, javascript is a single threaded language so that means uh, the moving the events from the uh, task queue the uh, task uh, queue to the call stack so this is the process uh, called uh, uh, i mean event loop so what is semantic tags in html semantic uh, uh, like um, semantic tags in html uh, that are um, easily uh, readable by us and uh, also uh, uh, like uh, uh, by the browser i mean so uh, i can mm. give one uh, a few example for it like we have a header so it is easily mm. readable that is it is it should be the part of the header and footer for the footer mm-hmm. and uh, aside we have for the sidebar also we have a article so these are the uh, semantic okay. elements Oh, okay. So we'll jump on to CSS now. So, what is box model? Okay. So box model, uh, I know about it, but I don't know uh, about the uh, exact definition for it. Let uh, I can um, uh, tell you one example, like uh, uh, any element uh, that we have, and uh, when we uh, inspect element uh, in our browser. So uh, on uh, on uh, in the browser, we can see the box model. Uh, there are uh, in Uh, I mean, uh, like uh, it has it has the combination of the um, uh, margin and uh, padding and a uh, border. Okay, one more thing. Okay, no issues. So, uh, uh, have you heard with uh, property called visibility? Uh, yes. Okay. What is the difference between visibility hidden and display none? Okay. So in uh, visibility hidden, uh, that means uh, the element will uh, uh, still uh, it will hold the place of it, and uh, in but it will be hidden. Uh, it uh, cannot be seen. But in display none, it will uh, uh, it will be hidden also. In uh, it will uh, store remo- uh, uh, also remove the uh, place of it. Okay. It will be completely hidden. I mean, hidden. It will be hidden, or it will be entire element itself will not be available now. Uh, element. I mean, console. Web console. Right. It will What be completely uh, hidden. I mean, completely hidden. It will not so. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what is display flex? Flex, uh, like, uh, uh, it is uh, mainly. Have you worked with flex? Have you worked with flex? uh no actually uh, and nowadays uh, we have many libraries so uh, i use mm. those library actually but i can tell a bit uh, about it so it is uh, mainly used to uh, make the uh, responsive the elements i mean to make the device okay. friendly application okay so what is pseudo classes and pseudo elements 
pseudo classes and pseudo elements okay. yeah pseudo classes pseudo classes i'm confused but uh, i know about these pseudo uh, elements like we have i can example uh, give one uh, example like uh, we have uh, hover and uh, active mm -hmm. so these are the pseudo elements okay okay so like you said like uh, inside the box model if we have a, a element also it will be having a margin padding and, and uh, context uh, right border everything right mm -hmm. so what is the difference between margin and a padding so a uh, margin that means um, uh, it it, it uh, uh, like in uh, i can you can see we can say like uh, it increases uh, the spaces on the outside of the element and in padding uh, it uh, increases the space inside the uh, element okay so i have two elements i mean i have two divs now so both are actually parallel Okay. I need to increase the space between two elements now. So, which will be efficient? I mean, if, if you adjust the margin, will be efficient or padding is efficient? Margin. Why is that so? Because it uh, makes the uh, spacing outside of the element. That's why. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll jump on to JavaScript then. So, what is called closure? Closure. Uh, that means uh, like. Um, uh, let's suppose I have uh, two function, one is a uh, parent and one is a uh, child inside uh, that function, I mean. So the child function will have access to the um, uh, parent function's uh, variables. So, Can you write the example Example uh, in the chat? Yes. Can yeah. you share my screen so it would be better? Yeah, no issues. You can share, yeah. So is it visible now? Uh, yep, it is visible. Okay, so let's suppose I will write a function, uh, function parent, and I, I assign a variable uh, like uh, any any variable like uh, name. So option, and inside it uh, I will have another variable uh, that is a function. Child, I will name it. Then if I log in, function dot name to execute it. So uh, here we can see it has the access to the uh, parents variable. Okay. So if we put uh, the another variable uh, with name, so it will consider on the child one. Yeah, can you write the another variable inside the child function? If you if you make it as a var both, what will happen? Uh, it will be same result. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes, here you can see. Okay, then what is the difference between var and lit? Okay, so in uh, like uh, so both can be reassigned by the way, but uh, uh, in var uh, what happens like uh, while uh, executing the compiler sets uh, the default memory on it that is um, that is undefined but uh, in uh, let it uh, does not set any uh, it does not initialize with uh, any memory so it gives if we try to uh, I mean access the let variable uh, uh, before uh, the assigning uh, it will be a reference error and in the in case of a variable uh, in case of where uh, it will be undefined Okay, so what is hoisting? 
uh, as I said, uh, like um, while executing um, the compiler sets, uh, uh, the default uh, compiler sets the default memory to the uh, variables and the functions. Uh, so okay. uh, like uh, in where uh, it sells as i said uh, it sets uh, the default value undefined and uh, in for the uh, latent const uh, it does not uh, any slash with any value that's why it uh, uh, shows the error okay 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 so out uh, out of why how good are you in react uh, four i can say okay uh let me share you a uh, fiddle link okay So, in this link, uh, can you add a button? And uh, there is already a text box available there. If I type like uh, change color, it has to change the color of the button. Can you do the code for that? Okay, so it's a JS Fiddle. Yeah, JS Fiddle. Create a button, and if I type anything right, so can you can you check the output before? Okay. Actually, I'm not that much familiar with JS Fiddle, so that's why I uh, don't know where uh, the output will be. Mm -hmm. uh, let me check it. Can I copy to uh, or code sandbox? Yeah, you can copy to sandbox. That is also fine. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear you. Yeah. Okay. Let me share my screen again. I guess uh, there was a network issue, I think, by my side. Yeah, yeah no issues. Okay. So, as I understand, like uh, you are telling, uh, inside the input box, uh, when you uh, write the change color, so uh, the button color uh, should be changed, right? yeah so uh, like uh, uh, in that case uh, we can uh, uh, like uh, put a one condition here mm -hmm. so let's suppose uh, if uh, mm -hmm. uh, name because we are storing the name here so if it is the change color then i can uh, one uh, i can uh, like uh, make another state here for the color mm -hmm. okay and then uh, we can set uh, the color. Let's suppose whatever color. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. not okay. just like this dot uh, set state. And then the color of it. Let's suppose uh, I put the red here. So mm -hmm. later uh, I can extract it from here the color, and we can change the button color of it uh, using this style. Background color like this. Okay. 
okay so here i have one more question here so uh, this change event so i mean the type uh, text box change event will trigger so for single every value right so, I, i mean uh, if i click for change color itself if i click uh, if i enter c h a then every time that this change event will trigger is it correct uh, yes right how do you prevent that i, I mean uh, i need to uh, trigger this event only if i input change color is there any way to prevent that uh yes uh, like uh, one uh, solution i forget the name of it but i guess uh, uh, using the debouncing but i'm not sure uh, about it debouncing yeah yeah okay good thank you okay good so what is redux so in redux uh, uh, like um, it is basically used to uh, store the state uh, um, i mean uh, to make the uh, uh, available state globally mm-hmm. so it will be acce- uh, accessible to the all component so basically there are okay. uh, uh, um, the main thing is uh, reducer that um, that has the initial value and uh, that takes uh, the type so and also um, like there is a, uh, we need to uh, declare uh, i mean uh, action for it so when we uh, dispatch the action uh, the state of uh, our state will be changed accordingly and to mm-hmm. make the data available in our component we have the uh, connect uh higher order uh, it is a higher order function so uh, using connect uh, we can uh, uh, we need to pass uh, two things there like uh, one is uh, map uh, state to props and uh, map dispatch to props so uh, map in map dispatch to props we can write our uh, action to dispatch and in map state to props uh, we can uh, use the selector to fetch the data uh, uh, from the uh, uh, i mean globally available state okay good Okay, uh, so have you worked with Node.js and MongoDB? Actually, uh, I'm mostly work on front end, but uh, no, don't know why okay. it is put on the main stack. But I'm I'm uh, quite interested learning on it. So I have basic uh, knowledge in Node.js. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm good with the interview. So uh, since uh, with the front end, I'm okay with you with your interview. So do you have any question for me? Uh, yes by the way if i get selected what type of project i'll be working on and will i get a chance to work on backend also because i'm curious to learn it yeah of course of course you can get a chance to work on backend because uh, here we are expecting like a person who to handle both frontend and as well as well as the backend so you might have many chances to work with backend as well